Here in Baja, California, where the California Floristic Province slowly morphs into maritime desert, we get one of the largest cactus species in the world, known as the Cardon, Pachycereus pringlea. You can see this guy right there in the background. Massive bastards, one of many species in the genus Pachycereus. I think there's like nine or ten. Pachycereus weberi from Pueblo, Oaxaca border gets the most broad. You can have upwards of, you know, 120 stems on some of those plants. These generally only get, I don't know, between six to ten stems. You can see this, this, uh, very tall, narrow bastard behind me uh, only has uh, five stems, four, four tall ones and then a little one below. But regardless, these things are really good at storing water and they can likely live for upwards of 200 years. Though you can't really date a cactus because it doesn't produce annual growth rings. Not in the sense that a tree does at least. Anyway, let's go check it out. You, you, got, a bit, you got a trunk like an elephant, like an elephant foot. Got some spines still, they kind of lose their spines. So they get large. They actually sell these in Home Despot and the other big box stores. Sometimes you'll find them five clambered into a little pot with, you know, in sphagnum peat that's been taken, you know, uh, from some fucking Canadian bog that is probably terrible for the uh, environment. But uh, regardless, that all aside, you can see they're absolutely thriving here. The soil is this kind of fine, silty clay particles mixed with conglomerates. So uh, it seems to be a deeper soil. And much richer you can see they're not over there on those uh badland like hills composed of cretaceous marine sediments where there's a lot of gypsum they don't really like it there it's a little hard for them to grow up there for whatever reason you can see you got a couple large ones down there in that little tranquil valley mixed in with the all the encilia farinosa and the stenocerus gamosus and the Four different species of ambrosia, four different species of ragweeds, desert ragweeds. Right here we got Hespero yucca whiplii. That's an ambrosia, as you can see right there. That's a ragweed. Ambrosia kinopodia folia. You can see that flower spike. Wind pollinated members of the sunflower family. Each one of those is like a little tiny sunflower that lets its anthers dangle out so they can get picked up on the wind. This is a really dominant shrub here. Anyway, these guys are massive. You can see we've also got the tree Ocotillo Fokiria columnaris right here. If you've been in the southwest deserts, you know Ocotillo Fokiria splendens hummingbird pollination. This is one that turns into a tree, but it's still doing the same thing that regular Ocotillo does. Those spines are just old petioles, just old leaf stalks. You can also photosynthesize through the stem, got a little bit of chlorophyll in there. Really unique habitat here. Pretty marvelous, and we picked a good time to come down here. They've gotten dumped on with rains. Summer's normally pretty dry. We're here in spring, winters. It's been a very wet winter. Mertillo cactus cochal over here. Let's go check out some of these big cardones. Look at that. It's, an, it's a ragweed with spines. It's a spine ragweed. You can see they're just, look, they just put their anthers out there, dumping their anthers out. All right, most members of Asteraceae have their anthers fused into a tube. These just dump them out. They're exerted so that they can uh, get picked up on wind currents. See how that pollen freely comes off? And those spines, of course, will prevent anything from chewing on it. So you can see the soil is mostly conglomerate that's been washed out of the mountains uh, to the east right there. God, it smells incredible. So many nice smells coming out of all the terpenes. Bahiopsis laciniata right there, Asteraceae. This little purple needle grass everywhere. Look at this guy. How old is this massive bastard? A truly massive bastard. There's a root right there. These often get confused with saguaros, except these are much broader. They can get much larger, and they don't branch midway up. They always branch at the bottom, as you can see right there. So much different habit of growth. And then when you get up close and look at the ribs and spines, they're much different as well. Look at this thing. This thing. This is probably a 300-year-old cactus, if not more. God damn, look at it. Many other stems it's had throughout its long life that have broken off, but it just regenerates a new one rather easily. The Cardon. You can see he's got lichen growing on him too, as well. Very big with the lichens. What causes that scar tissue, that browning? Those maybe just as the tissue senesces, gets old, still green at the top. Look at that. Wow. I said wow. 
can see a little little bit of lichen. Here's that moss. It looks like lichen. It was just raining here a minute ago. And they can get much larger than this too. I've seen them. I mean, just incredibly, incredibly sized. Oh look, it's fasciated. It was doing a little crested thing up there at one point. Probably, I'd, I'd be surprised if he's got another century left in him, but regardless, it looks like he's had a few already. Pack of Sirius Prima, everybody. And of course, we got the Galloping Cactus, Stina Sirius Gamosis. Nice boojum draped in beard lichen. Which is just a fungus farming and algae. Oh, the boojums, they get really nice. They do a lot of weird stuff. They get fucking weird, man. They get real weird. They don't grow straight up. Columnaris only applies to half of them, the species that but then. We just seen one that arched right over. You could have taken wedding photos there if you're into that sort of thing. Personally, I think marriage should be banned, but that's just me. Awesome. Oh, it's Crotalus ruber. Is that what that is? Or is it just the western dime? I think it's Crotalus ruber. I'm sorry, guy. We'll put your little cactus back up on top of you. Don't worry. Oh, you really are a beaut. Look at you. Is that Crotalus? I'm pretty sure it is. We've seen one of these before. It was a larger one. He was just coming out. He got all excited because the sun came out. And then these bipedal primates came by. Started fucking with his whole vibe, you know. We we just got to make sure to put that, that thing back, you know. That cactus back for him. Beautiful. Put you back in there. We'll put your little cactus home back on there. There you go. Sorry about that guy. It's like clickbait hour for Discovery Channel. Now we got a little black widow over there. They always like the, you know, the kids always like the venomous stuff. The stuff that can hurt you. Look at wonderful thicket of galloping cactus. Possibly all the same individual. Another cactus that probably lives for 100 or 200 years. Huge flowers when it goes off. Giant flowers. Moth pollinated, but I've seen them open during the day too. So there's probably, might be generalist. Cylindra puncha, I think that's prolifera. I don't know, there's so many goddamn wonderful kinds. Sparrow yucca whiplii. A yucca trying to be an agave. It's monocarpic, it flowers once and dies, but it produces prodigious offsets. And of course, here's Harfordia macroptera, polygonaceae, the buckwheat family. Look at those bizarre fruits. Little balloon fruits. Reduced leaves. Anyway, there's a young cardone. Look at that beautiful blue farina on that new growth. Oh, these will do fine in, in most places in Southern California as long as they get enough sun and airflow. You know, I got one in my place in South Texas. It survived the, uh, you know, 20 degrees for a couple hours in the morning. Wonderful cactus. All right, you can see a little guy. I didn't see any little guys. I've seen some little seedlings up growing up on that clay and then we moved them down and I replanted them down there because that clay is just weathering too easy. I mean, nothing's growing up there for a reason. Anyway, wonderful species, little known, underappreciated. Pachycerus pringlet, a whole genus Pachycerus, pretty marvelous. Anyway, that's all I got. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. The Lophocerus shoddy, the Sunita coming back. You think he's down for the count? All right, coming out of those dead stems, all that scar tissue, barely barely any chlorophyll left in there. But he's got enough juice from these recent rains to sprout multiple stems. You can see he's doing it. You know, like 20 different stems coming up now. Surrounded by Peridolia morii, a little composite right there. A little annual composite. Okay, Alan, tell us what, what we found now. What's this? What's going on here? Jordan found some awesome fluorescent gallerina. And so it's just like a little brown mushroom, but in ultraviolet light, they glow bright blue. So there's some sort of chemical in there. Yep. It's some indicative kind of, of some sort of secondary metabolite. Converting the ultraviolet light into white light, or into blue light in this case. Just right here in this little valley of cardones, you know? Wouldn't even expect that. Wouldn't expect to see those little guys, those little mushrooms in a desert with giant cacti, but there it is. And of course, all that ambrosia. Kinopodia folia is the uh, shrub right here. Very dominant. Still blown 